Hi everybody, I'm Danny Gregory and this is Draw With Me. We're going to have some fun drawing. As you saw in the uh, first 90 seconds last week, oh, actually two weeks ago, um, we, our assignment was to do some, start thinking about travel again and travel journaling and uh, all the wonderful things that you can fill your sketchbook with when you travel to other places. The reason was because I was traveling and I uh, was preparing to travel and I am now back after my whirlwind tour of uh, the East Coast, well, New York City and Long Island. So uh, it was really quite intense, I have to say. I mean, I have flown between the East and West Coasts of the United States many, many thousands of times. Um, but this was, you know, this was pretty intense. You have to put on a mask the minute you step into the airport and you don't take it off basically until you land at the other end. Um, so that was here in Phoenix, we kind of have relaxed the masking business. And so that was quite, quite intense, quite um, a thing. So, but that was the least of it. I think I had, I'll be honest, I, I didn't really talk about this last time, but I had a certain amount of anxiety about this trip and it took me a while. Do you ever have a sense like where you have a physical, you have an emotion, but it manifests in some physical way. Like you just kind of feel it in your, your stomach or, you know, just something like that. And that's what I, I had like a thing right here in the pit of my stomach, my breastbone for a couple of weeks before I went on this trip, just wasn't really sure what it was about um, because you know, I, I, I'd been to New York in September, so I kind of knew what, what to expect. Um, so yes, I'm sorry, is there some sound issues? How's that? Is that better? 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 Hello, hello, hello. Good. Okay. Sorry, D. Renee. All right. So I'm now here and louder. Um, yes, yeah, so so I, I realized that, that um, it was less about what it was going to be like. And it was, I think, more stepping out of my bubble. You know, for the last 15 months, I've been in this situation that was very, um, you know, that we had built to protect ourselves. We all did, right? We all kind of like, like animals in our burrows. And suddenly stepping out of it was just, you know, in a non-specific way, kind of anxiety provoking. So, but nonetheless, I had a good time. I did a lot. Um, and I went to, uh, I was staying with um, one of my oldest friends, Tommy Kane, who is an artist. And uh, he showed me his amazing sketchbooks that he's been working on. Something about the pandemic has made him, um, speaking of burrowing, has made him like focus more and more on the details of what he's doing. And his sketchbooks are absolutely amazing. If you've never uh, seen his work go, I think it's uh, at real taught me Kane on Instagram, but, he, but seeing his drawings in real life just reminded me of how, I don't know how beautiful it is to really work hard on a drawing. Um, hi, noob wise. Welcome from Denmark. Um, yes. So how, you know, what it's like when you really work on something and you spend the time and how the drawing shows that. I tend to move quickly and, you know, move fast. But when I saw his stuff, I was reminded of that and, and also how much time he's spending on it. So that was really great. Um, we also went to the Metropolitan Museum to see the Alice Neal show. I've always loved Alice Neal and I've never seen an enormous show like this. I don't know if there's ever been one actually. But uh, so many portraits um, going back over the whole course of her career. That was fascinating. Also, I saw a lot of things I'd never even knew that she really did, like painting the city. Um, sort of, I guess, urban sketching in a way, but drawing, uh, but paintings. Uh, still lifes that were really like Cezanne-like. She was just an amazing and unappreciated painter because of course she was a woman and she was a realist at a time when neither of those were in fashion. But if you get a chance to see this show, I mean, it's worth 
putting on a mask and <laughs> flying to New York just to see it. It was incredible. And the Met was like pretty empty, you know, there weren't a lot of people there. So, I mean, there, you had to have a reservation. They only let in a certain number of people. So it was quite a pleasant thing there. Then we walked down to Chelsea and walked through about eight or nine blocks of galleries and honestly saw kind of nothing. Just didn't, I mean, I felt like all the work that was there was in shows that had probably been planned long before the pandemic began, and it felt just irrelevant, just self-indulgent or incomprehensible, you know, and I think we're all different, and the art world is going to have to adjust to it, so hopefully they will. Um, and uh, what else? Um, oh, my son surprised me. <laughs> it was Father's Day last Sunday. Uh, oh, yeah, a week before Sunday. And I was with my sister on the boardwalk on, in Long Beach. And this, I was kind of distracted. And then this guy came up to me wearing a mask and carrying a backpack, and he kind of shoved it onto me. Now, earlier, my sister had said to me, have you heard from Jack yet? And I said, uh, no, I don't know. if he's, he's busy. I don't know if he'll call me. We'll see. I, I really had low expectations because I had seen him not long ago. Anyway. This guy shoves his backpack at me and I kind of recoiled like, what is this? And then I realized it was Jack. He had flown to New York to surprise me and he spent the week in New York too, hanging out with me and Tommy and our other friends and his friends as well. It was just really a really nice thing to do. But also I was there because we were filming two workshops. I filmed a really great workshop with Jedediah Doré, who is uh, amazing amazing urban sketcher. If you like people like Melanie Reen and Veronica Lawler, he will blow your mind. He's really awesome. He was so, so nice to work with. And we filmed in Red Hook and that workshop will be coming out later this summer. It was amazing. And what else? We um, also filmed with August Wren. Remember August Wren? who uh, is in Watercolor Rules, and she also did another workshop with us on gouache portraits, where we filmed in her studio, brand new studio, completed just before the pandemic, made me super jealous. It was awesome, and we had a great time filming there. So that was really fun, and that's going to be coming up also. So all in all, a really, really interesting trip, very intense. Um, one day I walked 13 miles, according to my watch. It was just, you know, New York City walking everywhere. New York itself is sort of recovering, but you know, it's still, it was still, um, it was, it was, it was intense like New York is and like Phoenix, frankly, isn't. And I'm a bit out of shape for that kind of experience. I realized how different it can be. So, but I, I came back. Oh, and when I came back, this is kind of cool. I just want to show you. This little, because I got a surprise package when I came back and I uh, made a little film about it. <laughs> Let's have a look and see what's inside this package, huh? Can you believe this? Sketching set. Color pencils. Watercolor pencils. Whoa! Calligraphy ink. Drawing ink. All the colors. Watercolor dot card. <laughs> Watercolor brushes. Pro marker brushes. Pro marker watercolor. <laughs> Pro marker extended collection. 96 colors. I think that's everything. When's Newton? Thank you so much for all these delicious treats. 
Yes. You guys are jealous, Janice. I, I understand. I'm surrounded by art supplies. However, they're not just for me. They're for you too. And I'm going to be sharing them. I promise. I will be sharing them. I'll be sending them out. I'll be using them here to show you what they're like. But there are a lot of things that I had no idea that Winsor Newton even made. I kind of think of them as, I guess, watercolors and gouache. But they make everything, paper. And I mean, I will be drooling over them for a while and sharing them with you so you can see. But uh, Twiggy, of course, was less than delighted by the fact that, uh, that there was no, no real snacks in there. So anyway, but it was really fun. And uh, I'm really happy to have that stuff. So as you know, Hanamula is one of our sponsors, paper, sketchbooks, and Windsor Newton, all this other stuff. So we will be talking about that and I will be sending it out. We will be, Windsor Newton wants you to, to have some of this stuff. So we'll be, we'll be giving out Windsor Newton stuff at, uh, at, our, at our workshops. We'll be giving out at Q and Art Lives. We'll be giving it out to Spark members. We'll be giving it out to you. Don't worry, I will share the riches, share the wealth. Um, all right, so what else did I wanna talk about today? Um, oh yeah, one other thing that I want to just tell you about in case you don't know, is I've been making all these new videos besides Draw With Me on the Sketchbooks Whole channel. I've been making all these videos and um, they're just kind of like video essays really going back and talking about things like I talk about here on Draw With Me. Um, things that we as artists confront and face. And um, so I've been making these videos, I've been posting them here on our channel. So if you've been missing them, haven't seen them, it's because you aren't subscribed perhaps. So please subscribe to this channel. Please like the videos that we do. What happens when you do that is it attracts more people to our channel. And what's good about that is it means more people start to draw. And that's the whole reason. That's why I get out of bed at 5 a.m. is because I want to help people to overcome their fears and anxieties about art making and to enjoy all of the incredible rewards that we get, we all as artists know, by drawing and painting and making stuff. So if you, sh if you support this channel, which you just do by clicking a button, it's not a lot, um, that will help. But also watch those videos if you want to. They're all there on, you can go to our channel and see them. So uh, I see some of them, have, Celeste has, has watched a few of them. That's great. Uh, Jody mentioned the How the Sketchbook Healed Me one. Yes, good, David, thank you, Lydia. That's so nice, so good. So I'm glad that you guys are seeing them and liking them. Um, I am enjoying making them and I will continue doing that. So, all right, moving on. What else? There's one other thing that I want to talk about. Um, what was it? Honest, let me just get rid of this, sorry. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about our plein air watercolor workshop coming up in a couple of weeks. You have a bit of time, but I would sign up soon because you can get all your art supplies in order. You know, um, it's actually sponsored by Windsor Newton and, um, you know, they make, I mean, it's not just because they're sponsoring us, but there's no question that their watercolors are the, you know, they've been making watercolors for like 800 years. So, or they made them for Queen Victoria. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but they um, plein air watercolor with David Pyle. It's a two day workshop, two days. We've never done that before. You come on a Saturday, you work for a few hours. You come back on Sunday, you work for a few more hours. You emerge a completely changed person. All of your friends are out boozing and you know watching Netflix. You're becoming a plein air watercolorist in the mountains of Colorado where David lives, filmed on location with on a with horses and mountains, it's amazing. Just so, just just go to um, sketchbookschool.com and you will see that. Is there? Do I have a sign? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, here you can sign up. Oh, is that it? No, that's not it either. Anyway, um, I'll I'll post it later on. It's actually down below where you can sign up for it at sketchbookschool.com. All right. Ah, uh, yes, it's also being posted here in the comments. So cool. All right, good. Let's get rid of that. Um, so here's what I wanted to do. I should have mentioned this earlier, but I want to just, I'm inspired a bit by my time in New York City. I want to draw big. I'm inspired by the plein air thing. I want to just draw like big and loose. And I want to draw cities, a city street. So rather than giving you a piece of reference, I have a thing up here that I'm going to draw from. It's a little picture that I printed out. It is of the corner of 23rd and 5th, um, with 5th, 
and uh, Broadway intersect. And that is where the, the uh, Flatiron building is. If you want to go and look in Google and find that, you can. If you want to go and find a, another picture of anything you want to that just feels kind of big. Let's go big. Epic. We're not going to get niggly and de detailed. We're going to just do broad strokes. We're going to get big. And you can work in whatever medium you want to, or you can work from your imagination. You know, I just want to make something that feels expansive. All right. So, uh, you know, whatever you want to use, we, uh, you know, but I just, I kind of thought like, I know I often share reference with you, but in this case, this is something that means a little bit to me personally. So I'd rather you go out and find something that means something to you personally. It could be a photo you took. It could be, you know, go to Google images now, if you want to, I'll spend a second or two kind of vamping so that you can, um, get ready if you want to. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to be working in probably pencil and ink, but I'm going to be using ink a little bit differently because I'm again, inspired by all this new stuff I got in the, my, my gift box. So, all right. How do you think, have you thought about it? Have you thought about something you'd like to draw? Um, Barbara says 23rd and 5th is a great place to sketch. It is, it is. So Fifth Avenue and Broadway intersect each other. You know, Broadway intersects all the major avenues. And when it does, it forms, it's a really interesting part. Times Square is another one of those. Um, you know, it's just an interesting kind of intersection. Um, and so you get lots of different angles. That's what I have here, lots of different angles. I mean, you can honestly just Google Flatiron and you'll get the same picture. Um, but yeah, you get lots of different angles. You can see there's like, you can see both streets there, the stuff crisscrossing. It's just kind of complicated, but we're gonna, we're gonna just tackle it as if it was simple. Okay. <sighs> okay, here we go. Um, let me switch to my camera. Here we go. Oops, very close up. So yeah, so here's some this, let me straighten that. What, what happened to me? Oops, sorry. Hold on a second. I seem to have disappeared. So, <laughs> why? Oh, here we go. How's that? Okay, here's here's me. And sorry, you know, no matter how much I prepare for you and try and get things all settled, you know, invariably this kind of thing happens. So, um, you know, that's that's just the way it is. That is the law of averages. And um, yeah, so let me just make this big. Oh, what a nightmare. Yeah, let me just come over here. All right, so um, here we go. This is my piece of paper. But as, um, and I'm going to, these are, these are these, um, these pencils are really nice. They're, you know, I, I used to use um, these ink tense pencils that I like also, but these ones are Newton ones are super soft. And they reminded me as I started working, I realized like, I think this is the sort of thing that um, one of my idols and friends, uh, Felix Scheinberger does. He uses these soft pencils and, uh, you know, you have to sh sharpen them quite a lot because they, uh, they do, they do get do wear down because they're soft but no big deal so yeah so i'm going to i'm going to just start where's my picture picture here and uh are you ready are you ready to do this grace thanks for showing up glad you're here ah <sighs> So, all right, um, let's go. See what I mean by loose? You get in my jam now. See where I'm heading with this thing? I'm just kind of drawing. You know, this is sort of a contour drawing, I guess. Um, I 
I have a problem here, which is I've hit Fifth Avenue and I've run out of space. You with me? You feeling me? So I need to go to my other camera point of view because, um, yeah. There we go. This is why. So I'm running out of space and I'm not happy about it. So let me put me in the, in the corner there. So what am I going to do? I've run out of space because here, you know, this is for the family goes down here. So, all right, here's what I got. Check it out. Oh, oh. what? Yes, it's a magically expanding sketchbook. Let me explain, shall I? Um, so, yeah, this is an accordion sketchbook, which is actually really good for this kind of a thing. Why? Because you, uh, you know, you can keep, keep, keep your drawing going. Or you can do separate drawings, but, you know, it then folds up and it looks like a regular book. So that is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about that. It is called Zigzag. I mean, it's, it is something you could make yourself, theoretically, but why? This, this is a Zigzag sketchbook made by Hanamura. And it is, um, you know, it is really nice watercolor paper. And it folds out. It has this nice cover. And I like this. I like this. Check that out, which is kind of cool, right? So yeah, this is a zigzag. You can find it wherever you find fine things. But this is a, you know, an accordion sketchbook. So yeah, so let's keep it expanded. We've got to expand it because you know theoretically I could keep drawing my way all the way to New Jersey with this gigantic thing. But I won't. I think I'll stop here. So where am I going here? And then this goes off the page. Nothing I can do about that. Ran out of photo. New York is getting pretty crowded. It's a lot more crowded than it was when I was there in September. When I was moving out. <laughs> whimper, whimper. But yeah, it's um, it's got folks everywhere, and they are rare to party. Well, they're not really. They're still, they're much, as I said before, they're much more, um, you know, concerned as they should be with, with being safe because uh, you know, they live in a really crowded city and everybody's on top of each other. So this is the kind of thing, you know, a lot of times when you start drawing, you're like, oh my God, how on earth am I going to figure out what's going on with a perspective? It does seem like a nightmare, right? Because you've got this thing going this way and that thing going that way and this going this way and this going that way. You know, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to look at what I see and I'm going to draw it. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not worried about the law. I'm, a, I'm an outlaw. Yes, I'm brazenly flaunting, flaunting, flaunting. I'm brazenly ignoring the uh, laws of perspective because, you know, because, hey, it's Miss, my friend, the leaf blower is here. I totally forgot about that. New York, no leaf blowers. But there's all kinds of other racket. Right. So yeah, I'm just I'm uh, putting these in in pretty bold strokes. Don't want to get too bogged down in the details though. So let's put, put another car here. An angle and uh, there's this sort of kind of uh, island here that happened at the, at the beginning, right in the corner. And um, what else? There's there's this kind of a net or thicket, I would say, of pole, poles and um, you know arrows and 
lights and all that stuff that makes the city work. Orders, directions. Man, this, I gotta say this. I, you know, I'm not a big pencil guy usually. I don't draw with pencils. I'll color in with them sometimes. Usually I'm a pen man. But this is something really nice and juicy here about drawing with a really smooth, juicy pencil that I'm quite happy with. Again, thinking about Felix, you know, that was one of the things that always struck me about Felix. It's like he would just pull, pull out a pencil and knock this stuff out. And uh, again, not a pencil that you're going to then go in and sort of be persnickety and erase stuff and go, oh my God, that needs to be a bit more of this. No, I'm just kind of drawing the general layout of this, of this scene, right? And that's good enough. And then, um, you know, I can always come back in in a second and uh, add some more stuff. But, you know, again, I want to capture the energy of the city. I don't necessarily need to capture the details of the city because it's made up of an infinite number of details that are completely overwhelming. You know, if you try and look at everything in New York, you, you lose your mind. Your eyeballs burst out of your head. And, uh, yeah, so... Put up just a couple of, you know, people suggested pushing a cart, carrying boxes. Every New York voice is carrying junk. That is the way when you don't have a car with a trunk, like we do here in a more civilized place, like Phoenix. Civilized? With a civilized climate. It's actually quite civilized today. It's only going up to 102, but... It was 117 not long ago. I mean, it is as hot in Phoenix. It's almost as hot as, like, Seattle. It's crazy. What's going on in the world? So, yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. The pencil broke. That's a sign that it's time to stop and think about something else. So here's what I'm thinking. I've been playing around with these inks, and I am really like them. So this is this. It's just a yellow ink. Yeah? Sunshine yellow. And I'm just going to knock out some just some stuff to give it some dimension. And uh, using this new brush, get it a bit wet. And I'm just, I'm, there are two ways of doing this. I can go in. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm going to put it, I'm going to take this little thing, little bowl, put a bit of ink in there. And I'm taking this as a big one inch brush. Right, one inch, get it nice and juicy, and then just try and just like knock some color into this thing, um, you know, like that, big and bold. A lower cab here and there, maybe a bit on that. So instantly, it starts to feel a bit more lively. Um, and then I think I'm going to do a bit of orange, but I'm not going to use this big brush anymore. I'm going to use this, I'm going to use a smaller brush like this. It's not that small actually; it's a number ten. But um, I'm going to keep adding to this so that it becomes, you know, kind of richer looking. Right now it's, it's you know, pretty, pretty uh, blocky. That's okay. I'm trying to train myself to recap bottles so I don't have the unmitigated disaster that is pouring ink all over your keyboard. Um, okay, so maybe I'll put a bit of this other yellow. Oof. This is called Canary Yellow, this one. They have these really nice labels. They got, Winsor Newton had this um, program for a long time of getting artists to make labels for them and make their packaging. And, uh, which 
it makes sense. It's kind of cool. Kind of side benefit. What if they'll ask me to do one? <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? They might. How about a bit of cloud action? So, you know, I'm using these warm colors because, uh, you know, it was June, so it was hottish, and um, that gives it some stuff. But again, these are not watercolor pencils, so that's why I'm able to just paint with ink right over them. Have you ever painted with colored ink? It's it is, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's kind of, I think it, it's big, bold colors, which are nice to work with. So you know what I'm going to do now? I want to put in blue. I have this blue here. Um, what is it called? It's called blue. But I, fortunately, I was, uh, you know, I was blow drying my hair this morning. It takes forever when you have hair like this. Um, so yeah. Alrighty. So that's, it's not super dry, but it's, it's dry enough for me to proceed with this blue. Why blue, you ask? Because it's the complement of orange. And it looks nice with yellow, too. See here? Can you tell? See how black that became? Because, of course, mixing complements. The brush is a really fast way to draw. Do you want to knock out a bunch of windows? I like doing it this way. You know, I have, I have like these, you know, I have pens and markers and stuff like that standing by just in case, just in case there's a call for more detail. But, you know, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. Sorry, guys, you can stand down. Uh, I think we're going to stay here with painting. Yeah, it's looking good. How's yours coming along? Did you pick a scene? Did you, are you making a nice mess like I am? It's one of the fun things about this stuff, about just, you know, it's also fun having a bunch of new art supplies, I've got to say, you know, and feeling like, feeling sort of lavish. Too often we buy these art supplies and we're kind of meager with them, you know. I don't want to, I don't want to waste them, that kind of thing, you know, but waste them. That's what they're here for. They're here to be wasted. Really, what are you saving them for? They'll still make more. But, you know. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty bold. Let's, let's see now. I'll get back in. Let's see here. Things collapsing off stage. Uh, I'm going to take some some color pencils in that same range and just kind of add to the fun. Um, just you know, I 
because this gives it a bit more there's just a bit more going on in the details so it looks richer because it doesn't look quite so flat um, You know, and I might decide to put in details. You know, I might say, I want to have some details for this building. Honestly, I've drawn, I've drawn this scene before. Never so quite so fast though, because it is over. It is an overwhelming amount of detail, and you can just say, "Oh my God, I have to draw every window. I have to draw every bit of cornice on this building." Or you can just say, "To hell with it. I'm going to knock it out. It's good enough. I'm not an architect." I'm just kind of giving an indication of where I, what this feels like. It feels, it feels alive, you know? It feels like there's a bunch of stuff going on. And that's really what I want to say about this. That's something we always have to think about when we're doing a drawing. Why are we doing it? What do we want to say with this drawing? And I wanted to say, you know what? It's summertime in New York City. And it's coming back to life after this horrible year that passed. Poor New York, more than anywhere in the United States, seemed like it was bearing the brunt of things. You know, it's also my home, or my childhood home, my home for most of my life. So, you know, I care about it, and I want to capture its energy and share it with you and say, New York's okay. Again, you should go there. You should go and see the Alice Neal show. don't even have time to sharpen pencils. Pencils are warning you, if you break or you get dull, you're, you're no longer part of this project. Sorry to say that to you, but it's a fact. This, this project is only for the, the tough and resilient, right? So you're gonna have to stand up to the pressure. This is New York City, it's not It's not for lightweights. So, yeah, these are these are holding up. I, as you can see, I'm working pretty hard and fast, and yet, uh, you know, it's all cool. What do you think? Think it's done? Done-ish? Now, we could, of course, continue. And we could work our way down to 6th Avenue, 7th Avenue. To all the way. Let me just get this. Shush. <laughs> we can work. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the um, thing behind me. Isn't that behind me? Ooh, I like the way that the light came on there. Yes. So that is that's like a big, a giant painting that I did of my street in Los Angeles when I lived there. So yeah, it. Um, It's fun to do these kind of things that stretch out. Make a painting as big as the landscape, you know? Just keep stretching it out and give it a, a kind of a, a, a kaleidoscopic feeling. Hi, Kosha. Nice to see you. You know, Kosha and I drew in, um, remember Kosha when we drew the Jefferson Market Library on 6th Avenue and 10th Street? And uh, we did a drawing together, drawing this building. We kind of worked quickly and knocked it out together. We were both drawing on the same drawing at the same time. That was really fun to do. So yeah. So this is, um, this was energizing. I feel good. I had fun doing it. So I'll drop it in there, let it dry. Ah, what else do I have to say to you? Oh, I'm a bit out of breath.
All right. Good. Yes. Um, so there are a few other things that I needed to talk to you about. Um, oh, I know what I want to do. So I think I, I mentioned this last time, two weeks ago, that I have this new thing that I'm going to be doing here is I really want you to think about sketchbooks as art. Something I've been hammering on about forever um, and I've written books about it, but you know, I'm not going to let up on it. I've decided that it's time to, to reinforce the idea of sketchbook art. It's not just about learning to do these things. It's about making sketchbook art, making art in sketchbooks. So each week I want to share a sketchbook with you. Um, and today I'm going to share one by a friend of mine in Sicily, uh, Fabio Kosha. You met Fabio, you filmed with him. Fabio is, uh, he is Sicilian, Fabio Consoli, Fabio. I mean, how Fabio is that? To be called Fabio? Yes. And he's a handsome man. He doesn't have long flowing blonde hair like Fabio, Fabio, but he's still a good looking guy. And, um, He's also a great artist. He's also really into bicycling. So he drives all around on his bike and he does um, stuff on his bike, drawing on his bike, on trips. And um, yeah, and he uh, is also a graphic designer and he also is a teacher. So I was talking to him. I've been emailing with him recently. I'm going to actually have a Zoom call with him next week to see how he is and how, I mean, because Italy, as you remember, was one of the first hard hit places. I'm not sure if it happened in Sicily too, though, but. Maybe they escaped it. I'll find that out when I talk to him. So I want to just share one of his sketchbooks with you just for a couple minutes. Um, yeah, Windsor Newton is also sponsoring this part of it. They, they asked us if we could promote sketchbook art, which I'm happy to do. And um, this little regular thing, it's a sketchbook tour, we call it. We're going to be doing them every week. And uh, here's Fabio's. I'm also going to put his Instagram handle on it, Consoli Consoli Fabio, is it? Anyway, you'll see it on there and so that you can go and follow him on Instagram because he is awesome.
So cool, right? Witty, whimsical. Um, yeah, I just love his style. You can tell that he's a graphic designer, but also he turns what he sees into his own interpretation over and over. It's just great. I think looking at his stuff probably inspired what I was doing today. Like just bold, geometric, bright colors. Boom, boom, boom. So I, uh, a few comments I didn't respond to. Um, Barbara asked, did you make that accordion sketchbook? No, Hanamula made it. Hanamula, our sponsor, made it. It is called... It is called the zigzag. It is made of really nice paper. It has a nice cover and it has this band. So you can find it in a lot of art supplies stores. You can find it at Blick. You can find it down below. There's a link to the Honolulu website. You can find out more about it. So there's that. Um, what else? Silverwind says something nice. She says, I appreciate your content. It helps motivate me to draw even if I mess it up. It reminds me that it's not about the end result, but rather the journey. Good, bad drawings. I appreciate both now. That's exactly it. It's better to do a really lousy drawing than it is to do no drawing at all because you're afraid to do a bad drawing. If you do a lot of bad drawings, you'll learn a lot of stuff. If you do a lot of perfect drawings, what are you going to learn? Where are you going to go? You're going to get bored. You're going to stop. You know, I'm perfect in so many ways, but not when it comes to drawing. Therefore, I am motivated to continue. So, learn from my example. Um, Constance says, I am drawing mountains and a lake from the front porch as the page of my new sketchbook. Luckily, landscape orientation. That's why they call it landscape orientation. That's great. That sounds very nice, sitting on a front porch drawing mountains and a lake. I envy you, Constance. That's very nice. Yes, you know, it doesn't have to be a big city, but it should be a bi something that feels big, expansive. Um, what does Emma say? She says, I'm watching while cooking, so I'll sketch later, inspired to use my Windsor Newton inks that I hardly ever use. I will be lavish with them. Yes. So that's the thing is like, you might've gotten like, these are the Windsor Newton inks. They come in these like really cute little boxes, cute boxes, but different things. And yeah, I've seen them stacked up in a lot of artists' studios, just like stacks of them. And like, just get in there, shove a brush in. It's a great way to use them up. Dip it with a dip pen. You know, they'll last forever. But if you just take a big, giant, I mean, I was using a one-inch brush in a little tiny bottle. That was kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm just giddy with excitement. But that was a, that was quite extravagant. But that's that was the fun of it. It's, it's just a bottle ink. It's not going to break you. Um, what else? Christy asks a question. What is the difference between drawing ink and calligraphy ink? You know, I also, uh, as you can see, I have an unopened thing of calligraphy ink. I've used this calligraphy ink before. Um, and what's the difference? Well, I don't know. I have a feeling that this is thicker. I have a feeling it's more opaque. But I don't know. We'll see. We could do a test. We can compare them side by side. These feel, I mean, you can see, look at the, can you see the bottle? See how it's like, it's transparent. You can see me through it. It's much more, it's much, it's much more liquid. So maybe it's more uh, translucent and you can layer it. I don't know. I'll ask the folks at Windsor Newton actually what they actually mean by it. What is the difference between, because you would think calligraphy ink sounds like it would be, I mean, ink, ink is ink, but it's not. So certainly um, you wouldn't layer India ink. It's just, it's just black. So yeah, so that's not going to work. Um, okay. What else? Grandma Smith says, thanks to Danny and Sketchbook School, I no longer save my art supplies for the day when I'm a better artist. Oh yeah, and I gave my five-year-old granddaughter her first sketchbook on Father's Day. Perfect. She will remember it forever. It's true. Saving your art, it's kind of a weird concept, right? I'm going to save my art supplies for when I'm a better artist. How am I going to become a better artist? Only by dirtying a lot of paper, emptying a lot of ink bottles, you know, draining a lot of pens and breaking a lot of pencils. It's just stuff. You can do it. You can use it. You can figure it out. Okay. Where was I now? I was going to go back to some announcements here. Um, 
just do me a few favors. One, I want to see your landscape. So I want you to put it on Instagram or on Facebook. And I want you to put hashtag SBS draw with me. It's pretty simple. Take a picture of it, post it. We'll find it. We'll track it down and we'll find it. And then next week I will share it at the beginning of the show. If you want me to, by putting on this hashtag. So, um, or if you're a member of our schoolyard, post it there. Definitely. We'll see it. What else? Um, I wanted to tell you about Danny's essays.com. Every week I write an essay. I'm going to write one tomorrow or I'm going to send one tomorrow. I write an essay about creative stuff, you know, ideas, problems, whatever stuff that's, you know, spinning around in my brain and I send it to you. It doesn't cost anything. It has no obligation. There's nothing attached to it. It's just me desperately craving attention and wanting to share my thoughts with as many people as can bear to read them. So that is the idea behind that. Um, so just, yeah, sign up for it. Just go there, put in your name and address, email address, and uh, I'll send it to you. End of story. What else? Plan Air Watercolor, the workshop coming up July 17th and 18th. Sign up for it at sketchbookschool.com. You know about it. I'll talk about it more before then, believe me. But for now, we leave it at that. This, again, as I mentioned, subscribe. Just go and subscribe. Click below and subscribe. This is what you do. And if you click on the bell there, the next time I post a video, the next time we have a draw with me, YouTube and the giant corporation that owns it, ABC, is that what it's called? Google, will come to you and they'll say, <clears throat> it's time for Sketchbook School video number new. But if you don't do that, how the hell am I going to find you out there? There are almost 10 billion people on this planet. How do I find you to tell you what's going on? I can't. So what else? Oh, thank you very much to Winston Newton and Hanamula. Without which, literally, I would be drawing on this table with a stick. So uh, check them out. Support our sponsors as they support us. That's kind of all I got for you today. We spent a good 55 minutes together. I hope you're still here. I hope you're still drawing. I hope you'll continue drawing. And I hope I'll see you next time here Thursday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. I'm not sure what time it is in New Guinea, but you can get this show in New Guinea. Yeah, why not? Manchuria. Uh, the Transveld. Denmark, clearly. You can see it anywhere. Just set your watch. Better yet, subscribe, and I'll come and get you and remind you it's time to do this. Thank you, and uh, it was lovely seeing you again. I'll see you next